August 21st, 1918. It was Marie and George's one year anniversary together. They had met previously at a party in the town centre and decided within six months to move in together. It wasn't a long relationship but it was quite turbulent. Marie's parents had both died in the winter of 1917 and George never left his girlfriend's side. George had a plan that evening in August. He would hire a rowboat and row out to the centre of the lake with his girlfriend in the hopes of asking her to marry him. They had never visited the lake before, just the surrounding hills and forests which George grew up only two miles from. It had never occurred to him to go out onto the lake, but today was different. People in the town often speculated how the lake looked too dirty and murky to fish from. Townsfolk from the local town of Bluebell also told tales of monsters, ghosts and other paranormal sightings from around the lake, but these claims were never backed up by any evidence so were just used as a scary story to tell the children. The lake's gloomy atmosphere definitely lends itself to some creepy sightings and unexplainable occurrences. Both George and Marie were a young couple, with George turning 20 in March and Marie turning 20 in May. Neither George nor Marie had ever set foot or swam in the lake up to this point. When George told Marie of his plans to do something different and row into the centre of the lake, she was a bit anxious and hesitant at first, but followed him along anyway. She held his hand as she followed him along the trail, deep into the forest, past the hills and towards the lake. The lake was huge. When George told his father of his proposal, he tried to talk him out of going to the lake but George was determined and ignored his father's pleas. It seemed like a huge distance to the other side. It was said to be hundreds of feet deep as well, which added to the local suspicion of the lake being a vastly unexplored place. During the evening of August 21st, 1918, George and Marie set out on the small rowing boat towards the centre of the lake. The space was quiet, save for the wind rustling, the trees and the birds chirping incessantly as night time was looming not too far away. No one knows exactly what happened between the hours of 6pm and 6am the next day, but the rowing boat was found upside down with a large hole in the centre of it at the bank of the lake. There was no sign of George or Marie's bodies. A local search of the lake and surrounding areas got underway on the afternoon of August 22nd, 1918. The lake was largely a mystery and there was no police records at the time to indicate something like this had ever happened there before. After a week of searching the waters and forests surrounding the area, no trace of the couple had been located. Police and the townsfolk were baffled at what happened to this young couple who were fairly well known and liked around the area. After one week, the search of the lake and forest became nationwide. People from different parts of the country got involved in the disappearance of Marie and George. The rowing boat was inspected and even though there was a sizable hole in the middle, there was no other evidence that could point to any real clues. Police speculated that the boat hit a large rock turned overboard and the couple drowned in the process. After three weeks, police called off the search and the couple's bodies were never found. The case was put on the back burner after a huge fire in the forest in 1919, which was a suspected arson attack. August 18th, 1999 to 2000. Since the suspected drowning of George and Marie back in 1918, the lake was sectioned off and the public were advised against entering the waters. Over the years many people suspected that the disappearance of the couple was down to everything from extraterrestrial life forms, to abductions, to 
paranormal activity. This lake became shrouded in mystery, intrigue and suspicion. Vandals had destroyed the gates in 1995 that, beyond, held the easiest access to the lake and the area where Marie and George's rowing boat was discovered. There was even a placard dedicated to Marie and George nailed onto the gates that also got destroyed. The suspects were never caught as there were no witnesses and the crime was suspected to have been carried out at night. The gates were never erected again and only a small cross was etched into one of the trees to signify that Marie and George had died here in 1918. It was now the twilight weeks of the summertime in 1999. It was a foggy evening and rather cold for the time of year. A man walking his dog beside the lake reported seeing a hand coming up from the depths. The man reported a hand coming out of the water, making a fist and shaking violently before the hand was submerged again. The man was fairly elderly and told police he had to squint to see the shape of the hand. He told this to police at the time, but the incident was surprisingly never investigated further. This was only the first sighting of many during the end of 1999 and into the new millennium. Many more sightings were to occur in this time frame, everything from howling noises at night around the lake to the figure of a young lady who appeared to walk on top of the water. The last sighting was seen by a little boy aged 10 in March 2000. This one sighting was reported to the police and amazingly after 80 years the case of Marie and George was reopened to further investigation. The police knew after 80 years the hope of finding something recognisable from the couple was slim to none. What police were on the lookout for were the teeth, bones, or any sort of other body part that would be skeletonized at this point in time. The lake would claim another life. In April of 2000, the body of a young girl was discovered face down in the water beside the bank of the lake. It was suspected that the girl was lying in the water for over 24 hours. The lake was a public hazard. Between sightings of paranormal occurrences and the latest body found, the townsfolk were frustrated and frightened. The attention turned from Marie and George to the little girl found. Soon afterwards, the little girl was named as Alexa Tanner and she was only 11 years old. Alexa had told her mother that she would venture down to the lake and promised she wouldn't go in the water and would return within an hour. After Alexa's mother had not heard from her daughter, she went down to the lake herself and when she could not find her, she phoned police and said her daughter was missing. Her body was recovered and buried in Kings Lane Cemetery. The girl was found fully clothed with no bruising, scratches or cuts, just the signs of asphyxiation by drowning. No one knows exactly what happened at Grey Lake throughout the centuries. Marie and George's bodies were never recovered and never put to rest. There are no records of disappearances or deaths there before 1918, but who knows how many lives were lost in the waters and never reported. Who knows how many bones of the dead are resting at the bottom of the lake.